Hi, I'm James from Radio.co. Today I'm going to talk to you about our new DIY player kit which we're introducing. It's a tool designed for designers or developers to create custom and tailored radio players, allowing you to take certain functionality or style it however you want. We've included a zip file below which you can download with some example projects which I'm going to run through now. So here's the examples zip file, I'm just going to extract that now and we'll take a look at the examples. So as you can see we get a variety of examples here. I'm just going to have a look at the play button example first. So here we have the play button. It's just a standalone play button which allows you to play and pause the stream. This will be handy if you want to include the play button somewhere on your website such as a nav bar or anywhere else where you wouldn't want the extra functionality that the default player offers. So let's have a look at the code for this play button. I'll open it in our text editor. So at the bottom, for all of our players, you need to include jQuery, and you also need to include the radio.co plugin to your page. You can copy and paste this into your project below. We initialize the player here with JavaScript, and this is the only JavaScript that you need to generate the plugin. So this is the code which you need to create the radio player button. So we give it a class, which helps you reference what the plugin is being called. We give it a source of the stream, which you can get this from your station dashboard. And then we have the various options which you can configure. Some of them toggle visibility of certain features such as the now playing or play button. So obviously if you set this to true, then it will display. For this example, we want the play button to display. So we set this to true and we set the rest of the options to false. The data volume is the initial volume that the stream will play at when it's being played. So the higher the number, then the louder it will be. This is the number between zero and 100. So you can set this to 100 and it'll be full volume. You can easily change the styling of your play button by just using the CSS. All the elements in the radio.co plugins can be accessed uh, using the class selectors, which are all conveniently prefixed with radio.co dash and then the element name. So you can access the play button here that's the current color and you can change this just as easily as this and then refresh and as you can see we now have a red play button so this gives you full control over the styling and branding of your of certain features within the player let's have a look now at the now playing so this is an example which maybe you'd want to display the now playing information on a home page but might have the radio player on another page let's open the code and see how this is generated. As usual, we include jQuery and we include the plugin and we instantiate it here with, between the script tags. This is the code here. Not much is different. We still have the options, but we have different values for them. I'm going to remove the containing marquee and the containing div tag here so we can see the output on its own. So here we've got the raw now playing information on the page without any CSS styling. To do this, all we need to do is again, specify the source, specify that we don't want the play button, volume slider or elapsed time to show. We only want the now playing information. And ultimately we want to hide the player as well. So playing around with these options can give you different results. You can also have multiple elements on the page showing at once. Say you wanted to show the elapsed time and you wanted to show the now playing information, we just refresh and as you can see, we get the elapsed time now. And all these elements are still targetable using CSS. One feature that we do have is all of the elements are automatically updated with the new stream information. So the artwork or now playing information will automatically change on your site wherever the features are being included. Let's take a look at the next example. This is the default player, which is when you use the predefined options in the player. This one has a lot more CSS as it requires to have more styling than maybe just the standalone play button. The code itself is very similar. We have an autoplay feature if we want this to be true. If we just change this to false, then when we refresh the page, it won't autoplay. We'd have to manually click the play button. So this is the sort of feature you can choose to have if you want. So if you wanted to change the picture here, instead of displaying album artwork, you can do really easily. 
All you need to do is add another option to your code. You can do data image equals and inside these quotes you do the source of the image. So here I've got one, the radio.co logo and I'm just going to save that, refresh and as you can see we have the branded radio player. However you want, you can put your station logo here and you can also change the background image of the player too. To do that, all you need to do is do data BG for background. You just paste in the source and save. And as you can see, there's CSS styling here to blur the background, which can be easily changed. But you can see the image has been applied. So I'm just going to get rid of the blur now. Here it is. I'm going to delete that and refresh and the background has changed. It gives you room to play around with the CSS code and style it to fit your brand. This is an example of a full customized radio player. This one has been heavily styled with CSS. It still has the, the play button and the volume slider and requires very little HTML or JavaScript code. There's a lot of CSS code here, all selecting certain aspects of the player. The code here, we have the background and we have the image and we have the volume. So if you wanted just the artwork to be displayed on a page, you can do that too, just as easily. The album artwork is loaded there. It's been styled to show up in a circle, which again, you can change however you want to on your website. We want to make these features very easy to implement into your site. So all the CSS styling you'd be able to create so your radio player becomes part of your site rather than a standalone player. So we set the option of show artwork to true and we set the other options to false. This means the rest of the player won't display. The image can be changed as such. We can change the size and we can get rid of the border radius if we want and we can add a border. I'm going to change that to 5 pixels so you can see it. And I'm going to refresh and there we go. There's our styled album art. And finally we're going to look at our ex advanced example. So this one's a bit more advanced as we have events and we can have full control on the aspects we want to include of the radio player. This allows you to build from the ground up your very own tailored player. This is probably for more experienced developers, but we're going to take a look at the code now and see how easy it is to get set up. Here we create a reference of the player. So we have the player and we assign it to a variable so we can access the methods which we provide to you. To access a method, all you do is type player and then type the method name. So if you wanted to access the event method, which allows you to catch events which are triggered from the player, you do player dot and then the method name, in this case event, and then we're going to say player dot event song changed. And as the second parameter, this takes a function. And inside this function, for the song changed example, every time the song changes, it will run whatever code is in this function. So we can do alert song changed. This will automatically execute every time the song changes and will run the code, such as alert, as you can see there. There's also some events which you can handle when the audio has loaded, played, or paused, or even if the time updates, which is handy if you want to have certain things to happen when the user plays or pauses the stream. We hope this helps you getting set up with your radio.co DIY player kit. Full documentation is listed below. Thanks for listening and have a good day. Bye.